Hi friends, welcome to today's video on our graph series. I am Chinyelu, a software engineer at Microsoft Dublin, Ireland. Today we'll be solving a more difficult question and I'm excited for us because this means we are making good progress. So today we'll be solving a medium question from Lead Code and it's titled Cause Schedule. This question is a bit tricky because you might not tell it is a graph question at first glance. However, as usual, I'm going to begin by reading out the question, pointing out exactly what the question requires from us. Then I'll go ahead to explain my proposed solution using a studio code so you can implement the solution using any language of your choice and get the same results. Also, I will implement this solution in JavaScript and explain the time and space complexity of the solution. All right, let's get started. There are a total of n courses courses you have to take labeled from zero to norm courses minus one. You are given an array prerequisite where prerequisite i equal to a b indicates that you must take course b first if you want to take course a for example the pair 0 1 indicates that to take course 0 you have to first take course 1 return true if you can finish all courses otherwise return false this is a good example of a directed graph. The courses are the nodes pointing to their respective prerequisite courses, which are the adjacent nodes. So in this question, we must return true if we can complete all courses. Otherwise, we will return false. And the only time we will be unable to complete all courses is if the graph contains a loop. So basically, we are going to determine whether a loop exists in the graph. If it does, we will return false because we won't be able to complete all the courses. Otherwise, we will return true. We have two examples to better understand the question. So in example one, we have norm courses equal to two and prerequisites array contains one element. This means that we have two number of courses starting from zero to two minus one. So consequently, our courses are zero and one. The prerequisites array shows that course zero is a prerequisite of course one, which means that to take course one, you must first finish course zero. For the second example, norm courses is equal to two. Prerequisites array contains two elements, which also means that we have two number of courses starting from zero to two minus one, which are course zero and course one. However, in this second example, the prerequisite array contains two elements. The first element says that cos zero is a prerequisite of cos one. And the second element says that cos one is a prerequisite of cos zero. So here we have a loop because cos zero points to cos one and cos one points back to cos zero. As usual, the first step to solving this problem is to create the adjacency list. If you do not know what an adjacency list is, I made a separate video where I explained adjacency list and adjacency metrics in detail. Please do well to check it out. The link is in the description section. We can create our adjacency list in two loops, just like we did in the previous video titled find if part exists in graph by first initializing the node in the adjacency list object and then in the second loop filling its prerequisites which is more like the adjacent nodes 
However, in this solution, I will create the adjacency list in a single loop using the prerequisites array. This way, our adjacency list will only contain the courses that have prerequisites and therefore save space in my own opinion. So we are going to loop through the prerequisites array and set each course as key in the adjacency list, giving it a value of object with three keys, can take flag, which is set to false by default, but will become true once all the prerequisites of that course has been taken. The visited flag set to false by default, which we will use to keep track of the courses we have visited. And finally, the prerequisites key, which is an array that holds all the prerequisites courses. Next thing is for us to traverse the graph to find out if a loop exists. We will know we have a loop when while traversing the graph, we meet a course which we have visited before. I will use a recursive function, that is the depth first search approach to traverse the graph. You can use breadth first search, the choice is yours. However, if you are new to graph traversal, I recommend you check out my video on graph traversal, where I explained breadth first search, depth first search, and recursion in detail. Let's write our recursive function. This function will take a course as its parameter. Recall that base case is a condition which when met in the function exists, that is returns. So for this solution, the first base case is to check if the course exists in the adjacency list, if the course does not exist in the adjacency list, it means that the course has no prerequisites and can be taken, therefore we return true. The second base case is to check if the course can be taken. If the can take flag of the course in the adjacency list is true, then it means that all the prerequisites of the course have been taken and the course is now free to be taken. Therefore, we return true. The third base case is to check if the course has been visited before. If the visited flag of the course in the adjacency list is true, then it means that the course has been visited before and we just encountered a loop. Therefore, it is impossible to complete all the courses and we must return false. At this point, we are visiting the current node and therefore we can go ahead to set the visited flag of the course to true in the adjacency list. And then we loop through all the prerequisites of this course and call the same function on each of them. If the function call on any of the prerequisite courses return false, it means we just found a loop in the graph and we should exit the function by returning false. Notice that this is the fourth base case we have met. If we succeed in calling this function on all the prerequisites of the current course, then the current course is free to be taken and we must set the can take flag of this course in the adjacency list to true and return true. Now that we have written our recursive function, the last thing is for us to loop through all the courses calling this recursive function on each of the course. And if the function call on any of the courses returns false, we just found a loop in the graph. So therefore we should exit the function by returning false. 
else if we looked through all the courses and did not find any loop then we must return true because it is possible to take all the courses time to implement this solution in javascript if you have followed up till this point feel free to implement this solution using any programming language of your choice so let's go ahead and delete the studio code and define our adjacency list we create our adjacency list from the prerequisites array if a course has not been defined in the adjacency list yet we define it and initialize its value of can take flag to false visited flag to false and prerequisites to an array else just pushing its prerequisites into the prerequisites array. Let's write the recursive function. Let's assign the course from adjacency list to a variable called course. Let's implement some base cases. If the course does not exist in the adjacency list, return true. If the course can be taken, return true. And finally, if the course has been visited, return false. At this point, we can set the course to visited and call this same function on all the prerequisites of the course and return false. If any of the function call on the prerequisite course is false. Now we can set the course can take flag to true and return true. Finally, call the recursive function on all the given courses and return false if the function call on any of the course returns false. Else, at the end of the loop, return true. Let's test and submit our solution. Good job! Now, let's discuss the time and space complexity of our solution. The time complexity of this solution is O of n plus m, where n is the number of courses and m is the number of prerequisites. This is so because the first loop that creates the adjacency list has O of m time complexity. Since it iterates through each prerequisite and performs constant time operations for each iteration. The second loop that performs the function call has O of n plus m time complexity. Since it iterates through each course and for each course, it may potentially visit all of its prerequisites. Therefore, the overall time complexity of this solution is O of m plus n plus m, which can be simplified to O of n plus m. All right, how about the space complexity? The space complexity of our solution is equally O of n plus m, where n is the number of courses and m is the number of prerequisites. The space used by the adjacency list is O of M because for each course in prerequisites, the code checks if the course already exists in the adjacency list and if not, it creates a new entry with an array of prerequisites. This array is at most length M. Therefore, the space used in the adjacency list is O of M plus M, which can be simplified to O of M. 
Also, the space used by the recursive function is O of n because it uses a recursive stack, which in the worst case, all courses are taken as prerequisites for the same course, resulting in a call stack of depth n. Therefore, the overall space complexity is O of n plus m. Thanks for watching till the end. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future. If you want me to solve any specific graph problem, leave a comment down below and I will add it to my list of videos to create. Thanks again for sticking till the end. See you in my next video. Bye!